Yo, yo, what is going on guys? It's about JT Lobster. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for all the support. Real quick, before we get into the video, I just released some shirts, some new merchandise. Link to the Teespring campaign will be at the top of the description. Four more days to get your shirts. Also, if you want to sign up to my email list where I drop stuff early and you get notified early, I don't spam you stuff, that will be below as well. Let's get into this video. How I made a lot of money out at sea. Yeah. All right, guys, so yeah, as you saw, how I made a lot of money while I was out at sea. Now, you guys know when you're a new sailor, when you're a junior sailor, you don't really make that much money. But when you get out to sea, when you get on your first deployment, you can start racking stuff up. If you go in the right areas when you're deployed, if you hit the right oceans, if you have kind of the right jobs, you can bring in a lot of bank. So we're gonna be talking about how I made a lot of money while I was out to sea and what you can do with that money smartly to invest it, to set yourself up for success in the future. I don't, finances are very important. A lot of you guys, they don't teach this stuff in high school. You have to self-teach yourself a lot of this, especially joining the military right after, you know, when you're 18, 19, 20. You have to know how to manage your money, man. You can set yourself up on the right path if you do the right things with the money that you save up while you're out to sea and it'll make your life so much easier. It'll make your transition to a civilian so much easier when you start college on the GI Bill, if that's your goal, or even if you just wanna start working right away. Man, just listen to these tips. Listen to how you can make a lot of money. Be smart with it. I'm gonna tell you some good books to read as well. Let's get it this way. All right guys, so when you're a sailor, uh, when you're in the military, everyone has base pay. Your base pay, you can go see the pay charts, it's, it's public knowledge for what everyone makes for what rank. But the way you can start really racking up money is when you're out to sea. There's a thing called sea pay. Now sea pay, it starts off small, it starts off in, you know, maybe, I don't know, for an example, it's 50 extra dollars a month when you're out to sea. But once you, you know, are out to sea for, you know, say six months or a year, two years, three years, four years, you rack up that sea time, your sea pay goes up and up and up and up and up. There's people that were in for a decent amount of time, like my boy Nikki MGTV. He's been in the Navy for like nine years, but he hasn't really been out to sea that much. There's people that have been out to sea a lot of times within their first four or eight years. They're making a lot of sea pay. There's also certain Navy jobs that always have sea pay year round, regardless if they're deployed or not. I believe if you're on a submarine, you get sea pay year round, regardless if you are out to sea or under the ocean deployed or not. There might be some other Navy jobs that are attached to carriers or destroyers destroyers or cruisers or uh, minesweepers or other types of ships, but I'm pretty sure right now it's only submarines, but don't quote me on that. So that's one of the pays that I was having. I had my base pay, I had sea pay when I was deployed. Another thing that I got was flight deck pay. When you're out working on the flight deck, it's obviously a very dangerous area. You get incentivized, you get extra money for that. Now it's not a lot, you would think, oh dang, I'm risking my life when working on the flight deck, it's really dangerous. Um, flight deck pay though is not really that much, I believe it's maybe like 100 or $150, if that, but still, that stuff will add up. Flight deck pay, if you're not a flight deck worker, obviously you're not gonna get that. But there's also other jobs that are gonna get pays that I don't. So air crew, air crew gets air crewman pay, or uh, you know when they're out flying in the helicopter, they get extra pay for that, for flying. Um, there might be like nukes, you know, nukes already make a shitload of money. So we're not going to be really be talking about nukes. A lot of those types of jobs, you know, that have require high ASVAB scores that they try to retain those jobs. A lot of people will get all their skills or get all their qualifications and then they'll leave the Navy and make six figures after four or six years. So to try to retain those sailors, the Navy will give them fat, 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 fat bonuses, but people don't care. They'll still get out. But let, let's talk more about the regular type of jobs. So I said sea pay flight deck pay, and that's already on top of your base pay. Another pay that I got was hazardous duty and imminent danger pay, hazardous duty and imminent danger. I was in a combat area, you know, when I was uh, deployed, it was for Operation Enduring Freedom, OEF. They sent us into the Persian Gulf. So we were in the Arabian Sea, we went through the Straits of Hormuz, and to the Persian Gulf. The reason it was hazardous duty and imminent danger is because you know, we're in the Persian Gulf there and the Middle Eastern countries are bordering the Persian Gulf. We also had Iran that was threatening to attack our ship every single time that we went through the Straits. 
We were always on alert, always had jets on the ready, always flying helicopters. We were always manned our helicopters with Hellfire missiles, torpedoes, and 50 caliber. Uh, the machine guns were manned. So we were always at the ready. I received hazardous duty and imminent danger pay. Also, like I said, my flight deck pay. Also, like I said, my C pay on top of my base pay. Another pay that I got, this is huge. Certain areas that you're deployed to, you will get tax free. That means all those taxes that they take out of your paycheck could be a couple hundred dollars. They're not taking that out. That's tax free. That's a huge, 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 another bump up to your pay when you're deployed to certain areas. So when I was in the Middle East in the Persian Gulf, it was tax free. Now this other pay that I did not get because I was not married at the time. I didn't get married until I got out and I went to Cal Lutheran. I went to college where I met my wife. Um, but you can get family separation pay. That's another extra pay. So there was a lot of people that I worked with, you know, you get your base pay. They were getting flight tech pay. They were getting family separation, hazardous duty and imminent danger, tax free. Dude, they were stacking up so much money. Now let's think, you're a junior sailor, you're 18, 19, 20, like how I was, you're young, you don't know what to do with your money. You can really make a lot when you're out on a six to nine month deployment. Our deployment was pr around nine months. So imagine, you don't have to spend all that money in port. You have to be able to, you know, a lot of people would go out, they'd make a lot of money at sea where we were at, and then we'd hit port, boom, they spend it all, it's gone. You have to be very smart how you allocate your money. You're working so hard, you're saving up so much money, then you go and blow it. You buy stupid things that you don't need. You know, you go to uh, strip clubs galore, you know, don't get me wrong, it's good to blow off some steam, but you should need to set aside a certain amount of money. Whether that be you only have a certain amount of money in your checking account, so you can't, so you, can't you know, keep withdrawing, 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 or you withdraw the money that you need in cash. And once you blow it all, you don't get more. I, I made that mistake my first port, and I didn't make it again in my Navy career. My very first port was Thailand. Pattaya Beach, Thailand. I've had many sea stories about Thailand. It's crazy. It's like Las Vegas on cocaine. It's an insane port. Many crazy things happened. Many ping pong shows were had. <laughs> and uh, I learned my lesson. And I was able to save up a lot of money. You can easily save up around $20,000. Even if you're a junior sailor, you can easily save up around 20 k on a nine month deployment. And for someone like me who's never had a lot of money in my whole life, who joined was literally I had zero dollars in my checking and savings. I never really worked. The money that I did make when I was in high school, I had to spend to pay on my car insurance. You know, I had to pay my own car insurance. And uh, you know, that was my bill. If I wanted to drive my car, um, I had to pay the car insurance. It was given to me by my grandparents. It was like a 1990 Rodeo Azuzu. But so I'm saying I didn't really, never had money before. So 20K, wow, dude. I had, to, I had to read a lot of literature. I had to teach myself. No one is teaching you that. There are some classes that you might attend in A school or C school when you're going through your training pipeline after boot camp called the Million Dollar Sailor classes. I never went to them. I highly recommend you did. I just self-taught myself and I'm gonna give you guys some tips. And so next I'm gonna give you guys some tips. I'm gonna tell you some good books that I highly recommend if you're financially illiterate. You need to set, it could be good though because you have no bad habits. You need to instill install and still whatever you need to set really good habits for you financially and it will set you up really well in the future so i really recommend you read i will teach you to be rich i will teach you to be rich it is a very easy read it's actually kind of funny and it gets to you very i mean it it's a very easy read you don't have to know that much about anything and you'll, you'll get a lot of knowledge from that book also the millionaire next door I will teach you to be rich, the millionaire next door, and also if you're an entrepreneur or you wanna be in a leadership position and make more money, um, how to win friends and influence people. Those are my three very highly recommended uh, books. Now, another reason I made rank, I was so motivated to make E5. You know, I made E5 right under three years as an aviation mechanic, which is relatively quick. I started off as E1 in boot camp, made E5 under three years. I wanted to make more money. As you make rank, obviously your base pay goes up and you make more money and it can, you can, dude, you can bring in some decent amount of money as a young kid at an E4, E5 level, especially if you get over four years, E5 over four, it's the base pay chart, it's not bad. But what you need to do, say you save up 20K, all right, you have $20,000 saved, what do you do with this? If you plan on getting out of the military, you need to set up an emergency fund. You need an emergency fund, which is three to six months, three to six months of living expenses. What that means is say you get out of the military, say your rent 
is, uh, I don't know, your rent's $1,500 and all your extra bills, say that adds up to $2,500 a month. That's everything that you spend, that's how much money you spend every month on bills and necessities, 2,500. You need three to six months of that. So let's just say, uh, you know, you wanna save up four months. 2,500 times four, that's $10,000. That's $10,000. So you just made $20,000 on deployment. You're like, oh, I wanna get out after four years. Boom, take 10 out of that 20K, you already have your emergency fund set up for when you're a civilian. Now you can start investing. You still have another $10,000 you can play with. If you wanna buy a used car, say you want a used car, you're in a metro, you're in an area that doesn't have a lot of public transit, you wanna to move to Southern California like I am, we don't have the good public transportation. We don't have the best, especially if you live in, you know, out in the valley or in certain areas need to transit into LA, there's a lot of freeways and you need a car. You have $10,000 left to play with. You can buy a nice, very reliable used car with that money. You can also put a very big down payment on a car. You can start investing. You know, you can throw a lot of money into your thrift savings plan or you can invest in other things like mutual funds. That's something you will learn about if you read those books that I recommended. Mutual funds, target retirement funds. Remember that, target retirement. Um, basically, it's set it and forget it. You can set these up with a Vanguard. I highly recommend you guys check out Vanguard. Check out their target retirement mutual funds. I have, you know, mine, uh, I set up the S&P 500 is what my money tracks, the S&P 500 basically. It automatically allocates your money. So what that means is I don't have to do anything because I'm young right now, it's 90% invested in stocks and 10% in bonds. When you're younger, you can be riskier. As my age gets older, it's automatically gonna reallocate that. When I get in my 30s, it'll probably be 70% stocks and 30% bonds. As I get in my 40s and 50s, it's, I, I wanna be less risky, obviously, with my money, so it'll lower it to 50-50, then maybe 60% bonds and 40% stocks, you know, because uh, the market sometimes is very volatile. Right now, the market, you know, the Dow Jones is down 1,000 points, everyone's freaking out. You don't wanna take your money out, ever. You don't wanna take your money out, you wanna ride the market because eventually it'll go back up. What everyone's saying right now is the Dow Jones, the market is um, fixing itself. We were in such a bull, I believe it's called a bull market, or a bear market, I think it's a bull market, where the, you know, it's just going up and up and up and up and up, and then it's gonna, you know, the market's gonna fix itself and, and it's kinda zero and steady back. So, you know, never take your money out. Keep it invested in those funds. Also, you can't really take it out because you'll be penalized. You'll have to pay taxes on that. So just look into mutual funds, Roth IRA, Roth IRA, Vanguard mutual funds, target retirement, and um, read those books that I told you Set up your emergency savings fund. From a nine month deployment, you can set yourself up perfect for civilian life. There's people that get out and they don't have you know, any money, they don't have any savings, they're freaking out with all their bills, they have a bunch of credit card debt. You know, just be smart with your money. Another thing I recommend is, is maybe start a credit card to start building your credit if you wanna have a mortgage in the future or um, you know, uh, take out a personal loan or whatever, you can get really low interest rates. Building up your credit is very important, but read those books, I don't wanna sit here and preach to you all these things. It's just, you have to teach yourself, you have to be motivated, you have to want it. You can make a lot of money when you're out at sea. That's one of the good things about the Navy, like I said, all these extra incentives, all these pays, people can come away with a fat stack. A lot of people will blow it. Don't get me wrong, a lot of people will take that 20K, they won't save any of it. They'll put 20K down payment on a 50K Dodge Ram 2500 truck. You know, then they'll have to finance $30,000 and they'll have a $400 car payment. People do uh, some really dumb things, but um, you know, you have to want it yourself. I can't tell you through this little screen here. You know, maybe I can start you on the track. I can let you know, oh shit, Seaman Timmy, you know, you're sitting there right now like, dude, what do you see? I don't know jack shit about anything. If you don't know anything, any terms, anything that I just said, Start reading those books. I will teach you to be rich, the millionaire next door, and uh, the other one if you wanna you know, be a good leader um, or get into business, how to win friends and influence people. I believe it's by Dale Carnegie, but that's it, man. I appreciate all the support. Like I said, I'm selling shirts, merch, JT Suits merch for four more days. That link to the Teespring campaign is below. Also, my email list link is below if you wanna join that. Um, I, don't, I don't spam you or anything. I just let you know when things are released and uh, new projects and stuff in the future. And uh, yeah, man, I'm really excited. I'm uh, feeling good. If you guys have been following my social media, everything's at JT Suits. I've been, you know, uh, going to the gym a lot consistently, getting strong. You know, I have my son. My son is now 21 days old. He's three weeks old almost. 
So I want to be healthy for him. I, I kind of lost my motivation to work out for a while. You know, I was always in sports, highly competitive growing up, so I always had a motivation to work out. I joined the military, obviously always working out. Once I separated from the military, I kind of had to re self-motivate myself to get back into the gym. So I'm feeling good, feeling healthy. I want to be strong for my, my little boy. And I set a good example. So um, I'll see you guys very soon. I will be doing the Navy SEAL challenge again very soon because I'm feeling healthy and I think I can crush it. And um, a brand new day in the life vlog tomorrow. Make sure you pick up your shirts, my boy.